So our first speaker, who we all know, is Delaram, and she'll be giving a talk on, on growth rate of an endomorphism of a group. Thank you very much, and thank you all for coming this early morning to my talk and supporting the New York Algebra Colloquium in general. So today I want to talk about uh, a work on the growth rate of an endomorphism of a group, and this is a joint work with Kenneth Falker, Mary University of St. Andrews, and Ben Fine Fairfield University. So let me give you an introduction um, when it started. We, we know that a lot of work has been done on the growth of a group, growth of semi-group that uh, Professor Schneerson is working on. Oh, hi. 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 So it's hard to speak in front of you. <laughs> He's an expert. <laughs> So going to find the growth rate of an endomorphism of a finitely generated group and related it to the entropy of a map F on a compact manifold. In particular, he showed that if you have an F uh, from M to M is a map of a compact manifold and HP uh, is its entropy then this entropy is always greater than or equal to the log of mu, where mu is a growth rate of f star on the fundamental group pi 1 m. So, Lauren, could you remind me of what entropy is? Mm -hmm. long you. <laughs> <laughs> you can. It may take too long for your talk. Huh? Yes. So, I guess you won't. Huh. I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> point. So in this work, we consider the purely group theoretic, so that's why I don't define the entropy on okay. manifolds, uh, aspects of the growth rate of an endomorphism of a finitely generated group. Um, Yasnikov and Spirain uh, wrote, wrote a paper in 2006, and it's pointed out in it that very little is known about the metric properties of an endomorphism of a finitely generated group, except in the case of free groups. <coughs> Our aim in the study that uh, we did is to elaborate on and clarify the ideas of Bowens and present some several new results. And uh, again, as pointed out in the Asnikov and Spirin paper, several different char characteristics of dynamics of an endomorphism of a free group were introduced. Right. So it's been working. There are a lot of work is out there on uh, automorphism, but nothing serious been done in uh, in this uh, the other classes of groups. So let me define the definition. This is due to Bowen. Um, let uh, gamma be a finitely generated group with generating set S, S1 through Sn. And uh, let's first define the length of an element, which is um, the shortest word in the, let in the generating set, which represents gamma. We show it by, you know, as it's noted there. And now suppose that alpha from gamma to gamma be an endomorphism of uh, gamma. And define the growth rate of alpha to denote it by gr alpha growth rate the supreme soup of the empty root of the length of alpha m over gamma, where gamma then just is an element in gamma and m goes to infinity. So this is the definition we're working. And now uh, we also give uh, several equivalent definition. For example, the first result shows that the growth rate is finite and that it suffices to conserve growth on a generating system. So again, as before, S is the generating set, gamma is finitely generated, alpha is the endomorphism. If you consider Km to be the max of length of alpha m applied to the generators, if you consider this to be Km, then you can define the growth rate to be the limit of the nth root of Km, or infimum of nth root of Km. This is another way to think about it. So the other thing, as I mentioned, growth rate 
of alpha is less than or equal to k, where k is the maximum length of alpha SI over the genera generators. And finally, if you take the growth rate of alpha n is growth rate of alpha to power. This is a equivalent definition that we came up with it and we can show that it's equivalent. Um, we present an equivalent formulation of growth rate of an endomorphism which ties the growth rate of an endomorphism on a group G to an increasing chain of subgroups. So here is the definition. Again, suppose gamma be a finite generative group, alpha it's uh, endomorphism. And now given R a real number, fix this endomorphism and define HR to be the set of elements gamma and gamma um, such that this uh, supremum of the nth root of the length of alpha and gamma is less than or equal to R. So you give an R and you fix the alpha and you define this HR and uh, you can show that the growth rate of alpha is the smallest value of R such that this HR is the whole gamma. So this set generates the whole thing. Okay, so the other interesting thing is that you can show, uh, you can show that uh, this HR subgroups of gamma as well. So after thinking about uh, several definitions, let's see how we can connect, uh, we can compute um, the growth rate on quotient or subgroups. Um, so the first, the first result is that if you have a subgroup of finite index in the finite degenerative group, it's also finite degenerative age, um, such that alpha h is a subset of h, it's kind of preserves it. Uh, then growth rate of alpha restricted to h is the growth rate of alpha. So they are the same. Um, so what about the quotient? So suppose you have h, a finitely generated normal subgroup of finite degenerative group gamma and alpha is before an endomorphism such that this property holds then the growth rate of the quotient is smaller than the growth rate of alpha in the entire um, so again suppose that H is a normal subgroup the finally generated alpha H is a subset of H, then the growth rate is uh, less than or equal to maximum of growth rate of H and growth rate of alpha on the quotient. So before you saw that this growth rate was bigger than the quotient, here we say it's um, smaller than the maximum of growth rate on H and the quotient. So, um, in this part, uh, I talk about um, calculating growth rate on different classes of groups, particularly abelian groups, nepotent groups, and uh, some small results about polysaccharide groups. It would be interesting to think about growth rate on other classes of groups, say metabelian groups, solvable groups, Peggy. Yeah, Thank you. Party for all. So let me give a very simple example. It just gives you intuition of how to calculate it. So just let's consider the simplest group that you know, a free abelian group of rank one, which is infinite cycle group. And suppose G is its generator and alpha is an endomorphism of G and where 
alpha g is mg for some integer m using additive notation. Then it follows that alpha ng is m to power ng. And if you find the limit, it actually gives you m. So this is an interesting uh, observation that uh, the growth rate of uh, endomorphism of a cyclic group is a notation. Um, what you could conclude in general if you do some computation, you can see if you have a finitely generated group, you can calculate the growth rate to be the maximum absolute value of the eigenvalues of alpha tensor 1 on gamma tensor C. So this is a way to actually calculate it. It's a idea. So one other question comes to, my, to mind is that how can you um, generalize these kinds of results to say any linear groups, subgroups of general linear groups? Is there any connection that you could extend this? Um, so let's look at uh, another example, simple example. Suppose your group is a direct product of z cross c, b3, a billion group of rank 2, and let a and b be free generators of g, and suppose alpha, the endomorphism, sends x to 2y and y to x. The endomorphism is then represented by this integral matrix, you could also look at the transpose, it's the same. If you find the eigenvalues is basically um, positive negative square root of 2. And uh, by the theorem that we, we just had, the maximum absolute values of these eigenvalues, this growth rate is square root of 2. You can also uh, directly <coughs> compute this growth rate, so alpha and x is 2 um, to power and half x, and alpha y is 2 to power and half y. And you take the limit and, and take the square root and so on. So again, you arrive at the same answer, square root of 2. So this is a very simple <coughs> example that you can see. So we want to move uh, to nilpotent groups. So nilpotent groups, um, you, the way you define it, you take uh, gamma to be gamma 1. And inductively, you define gamma j plus 1 to be the commutator of gamma j. And uh, a group is nilpotent if at some point uh, the whole, the you know, there, is, there exists C such that gamma C plus 1 is the identity. So we want to come up with some, um, some result to be able to find the growth rate of an endomorphism over an important groups. So suppose that uh, you have again a finitely generative group, not necessarily important. S is the set of generating set, alpha and endomorphism. So note that this time I didn't say, you know, this alpha h is a subset of h. Because when you have such thing, you can basically show that it preserves um, the series. So then we can show that the growth rate of alpha is greater than or equal uh, to growth rate of alpha on the quotients of gamma j mod gamma j plus 1 to power 1 over j. So this is, needs some work, but um, that's what it's doing. Is that maximize when j equals 1? Yes. Oh. Yes, exactly. When we talk about the important group, you actually see exactly what mm -hmm. um, So let gamma and alpha be as before. This is another thing mentioned, so growth rate of alpha and gamma is less than or equal to maximum growth rate of alpha on gamma k mod gamma k plus 1. So we didn't mention about the power here. 